On October 14th, 2012, this man jumped from 127,851 feet in the air. With over 8 million people watching live, he was in free fall for just over 4 minutes at speeds upward of 843 miles per hour, faster than the speed of sound. After safely landing, he broke two world records and had everyone talking about him for months. As awesome as the stunt was, it begs the question. Why did he do this? If you may or may not know, Red Bull was behind this insane stunt. In every angle of the three hour long live stream, Red Bull's logo was plastered front and center. So was this stunt just for Red Bull to get more sales? And if so, did it actually work? Or was there a bigger motive for Red Bull to spend $30 million on one of the riskiest marketing campaigns of the decade? Today, I'm covering the whole story of this stunt, from how it was created, to the actual jump, to what happened after, and discovering the true reason why Red Bull pulled this off. And what better place to start than introducing our main character, a man who was willing to risk his life for Red Bull. Felix Baumgartner. Felix was born on April 20th, 1969 in Austria, the same country where Red Bull was created. As a child, he dreamed about skydiving and always had an appetite for thrill. In 1999, at just 30 years of age, he claimed the world record for the highest parachute jump from a building when he jumped from the Petronas Towers in Malaysia. And four years later, Felix became the first person to skydive across the English Channel. He even jumped from the hand of the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. Case in point, Felix Baumgartner was a daredevil. He was willing to put his own life at risk for doing some of the craziest stunts humans have ever seen. And luckily for him, he was about to be given the chance to pull off a stunt that would top every stunt he had done previously. Because in 2005, Red Bull was looking for a man like Felix to perform a stunt no other human would dare to try. That year, Red Bull decided to dedicate $30 million to fund the biggest marketing campaign it had ever done, the Red Bull Stratos campaign. I'll cover why Red Bull wanted to do this campaign later in the video. But first, we need to understand what the actual plan was for the jump to get a feel for how insane this idea actually was. Before Felix made the jump in 2012, there were seven years of research and preparation Red Bull did to make sure that this was going to work. Red Bull worked with a highly respected support crew, including Joe Kittinger, a man who had held the previous human freefall record. They had experts designing Felix's spacesuit, the capsule and hot air balloon he would travel in, and had a highly respected mission control team talking him through the entire jump. Felix's goal was to break Joe Kittinger's 62-year-old human freefall record of 102,800 feet. The plan to do so was for the whole jump to last 10 minutes, from the moment Felix started to ascend to the moment he touched back down to Earth. The balloon Felix would use would hold 30 million cubic feet worth of helium to create lift, 10 times larger than what Joe Kittinger's balloon could hold. After inflating the balloon, Felix would get in his capsule and ascend at about 1,000 feet per minute to reach an altitude of 120,000 feet above sea level. With that being said, on October 14th, 2012, Red Bull and Felix Baumgartner were ready to make history. T-minus eight hours until launch. After a weather and safety briefing, the team inspects the equipment and communication systems, then pulls the box balloon and equipment out of the hangar, while a separate crew works to clear the runway of dirt, debris, and other objects. T-minus four and a half hours until launch. The balloon is laid out while the parachute and capsule are connected. At T-minus two hours and 15 minutes, the balloon's helium valve are rechecked and verified. T minus one hour and 15 minutes. All capsule checks are complete. T minus one hour, the crew chief contacts mission control and requests permission to begin inflation of the balloon. And at T minus 55 minutes, inflation of the balloon begins. T minus 30 minutes, Felix is sealed in the capsule, which is cradled on a crane, and the pressurization of his suit begins. T minus 10 minutes, inflation of the balloon is complete. And at T minus one minute, the balloon bubble is released from the launch arm. And right at launch, as the balloon begins to rise, the crane bearing the capsule drives rapidly down the runway to meet it. The crane then releases the capsule when it's vertical with the balloon, and then the balloon lifts the capsule off the crane and the ascent begins. From there, Felix patiently waits for two hours to reach the final altitude of 127,851 feet. Once he has reached it, he slowly steps out of his capsule to the edge. With 8 million people watching and his life at risk, Felix salutes and leaps out, beginning his freefall. For the next 4 minutes and 19 seconds, Felix free falls only with the hope that everything goes to plan for his landing. And sure enough, it does. Felix was able to pull his parachute and safely land on the ground, thus completing his journey and breaking two world records, one for the highest freefall altitude and one for the fastest speed achieved by a human during freefall. So now that he completed his stunt, 
what happens next? Do Red Bull sales shoot through the roof? And if so, was that the whole point of this seven year long endeavor? Why did Red Bull spend millions upon millions of dollars for this one crazy marketing stunt? Well, it turns out there was a lot more to all of this than just Red Bull trying to sell more cans. But first of all, yes, Red Bull sold a boatload more cans after this marketing stunt. After the stunt, the company increased sales by 7% in six months, generating $1.6 billion in revenue. But the truth is, this stunt wasn't even created to sell more Red Bull. According to Red Bull, the main target was valuable research and data for future space exploration. Rather than have it merely be viewed as a marketing stunt, they were tasked with telling the story of Felix Baumgartner's lifelong dream to break Joe Kinninger's record. Felix became the first person to break the sound barrier outside a vehicle. And the kind of data that yields does not come around often. Yes, the core of the whole experiment was a commercial endeavor to get everyone to love Red Bull. But Red Bull was able to accomplish so much more with the campaign. They inspired millions of people, both young and old, and actually benefited society much more than a normal commercial would. It was an astonishing display of the value of human endurance, of adventure, investment, and commitment. The fact that this mission to the edge of space was funded and created by a brand is simply remarkable.